Tonight we have the bee eaters. We're very excited. They're also be here tomorrow night. So if you know anybody who's missing the show tonight, make sure they make it out tomorrow night. And then we have a Saturday show uh, called Laptop Dancer. It's a benefit for NPA and it includes adult humor. So we have the adult show on uh, Saturday night and then a more kid-friendly matinee on Sunday. So check that out on the website and get some more information about that. And so, without further ado, the Bee Eaters.
It's actually a guitar player, but we call it a fiddle tip because it's just kind of, it feels like one to us. That's what I thought when I heard it too. That sounds like a Dulce Martin. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now we're going to do a song. You guys all have the copy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Great. Because James is back there and he's a master. He's a great song. <laughs> <laughs> song that we arranged and recorded on our last CD that we put out. And, um, it's a really great song. It's a Bruce Hornsby song called The Way It Is. But before we play it, I have to pass these things out. <laughs> I don't think it's too early at all. I'm really excited about this because about an hour and a half before the show tonight's I made a startling realization that I had forgotten to do something <laughs> that I that I promised that I'd do. Um, you know how like how that is when you're like, oh no, I forgot this thing that I said that I'd do. I thought I was so smart, and then anyway, um, this amazing band that's basically our favorite band of musicians. They're so good. It's so like you think about like what are some amazing groups and of course we all really love the Beatles and, and these guys are like on a level like of that sort of quality of music. Uh, they're a trio and they're from Sweden. They're called Vezin. And uh, they're actually coming to play here and Tristan and I are playing an opening set for them on uh, Wednesday, April 24th. And so I told their agent, um, Maria, that I would give you guys some info about the show because uh, she said, I don't know, Arcata, they've never played there. They have I don't know if they have a fan base, will, will people want to come out for a band from Sweden? And I thought, well, we really want to get these guys up here to see the Redwood Trees and hang out in Arcata. So I said, oh, it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll pass out some information about the show. And so that's what I realized. And so Simon and I found ourselves um, down at Kinko's a little while ago <laughs> with a glue stick. <laughs> a, one CD from the band, one glue stick, a black marker, and a pair of scissors. <laughs> so we tried to do the most professional job that we could. And so I'm going to give these, these postcards about the concert out to you guys. And if you want to take an extra and give it to a friend or something, we're just hoping that everybody will come out and listen to some really amazing music. We yeah. could have each slide. You won't be disappointed. You can just put the extras on the back table. They'll probably come back around to the back and there'll be a little pile left. Anyway, I'm quite proud of my handiwork, so <laughs> I'm sorry for being silly, but we worked quite hard with the glue stick <laughs> to make it not look really bad. And the photocopied CD turned out quite well, I think. <laughs> We did eat cookies while we were doing the job. And I practiced my hand. I was thinking about this recently about how they're like, in a lot of places they're not teaching, um, not really teaching writing in school. I mean, you're sort of like on the tables and not, you know, like, why even teach printing if you can just give every five year old a MacBook Pro and a PowerBook, whatever, they, whatever the going on is right now. I have one, but I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> Anyway, I'll stop, but <laughs> never mind. <laughs> this is going to have my head. <laughs> so I was, I was enjoying like, trying to see where you were maybe going to go with that. <laughs> where I was going to go with that, and so I'm proud of the fact that I can still write, even though what I started trying to do, and I realized that I used to be better at it when I was about 18, <laughs> when somebody thought it was actually important to practice. <laughs>
Thank you. 
because it's much cooler than my mic. I mean, that's a great mic. Does it this mic? No, I would never do that. But it just sounds so much bigger in the middle here. slowly, not making any sense, and everybody really, just looking at me like, it's okay, man. <laughs> so, but I'll get it, I'll get it. And then next time I come, I'll let you know. <laughs> tomorrow? Yeah, maybe tomorrow. I just, maybe I need more time to think about things, because the only time I end up thinking about it is when I'm like, Oh, there's this thing, and then, and then, and then, you know, it's like you think you're going to think about it the next day, or like when you're lying in bed waiting to go to sleep, you just don't, you're probably like, or for me anyways, you're like, should I eat one more bowl of cereal? <laughs> probably. Dilemmas of a touring musician from American. The only thinking time you have is on stage in front of a whole bunch of people. That is the hell of a kind of thing. That's that's part of what I was trying to say. Actually. Cool. Yeah. Cool. What's the rest of it? I don't know. <laughs> but it has something to do. Mike Drunkers um, had a really great insight. Was that he was like. I was trying to figure this out in front of him, and he was like, I think I know what you're talking about. And you know why I know what you're talking about? Because you can't explain it. That's how I know what you're talking about. <laughs> and he, was, he mentioned that talking head song. You know, the one where the guy's like, this is not my beautiful house. <laughs> That's something to do with that. <laughs> when he plays my Irish tunes. <laughs> And we're going to send a guest room back to you guys, and if you'd like to tell us anything interesting, you are very welcome to. And um, um, just keep it moving in for the second set, too. And uh, you can give us your email address if you want to know about shows and stuff, and um, tell us where we should go hiking, or <coughs> God forbid that we suck or something. Tell us whatever you want. That's the point. Um, it starts with a tune called Marmon Chapel, and goes into one that's named after... A girl, which is typical of Irish reels, but I'm not sure which girl it's named after. Um, and then we'll end up with one called the Virginia Reel. <laughs> Thank you. 
actually got to spend a week or two in Ireland recently. Traveling around and going to lots of great Irish sessions, picking up tunes and stuff. I think there's some goodies out there, and um, we might not come out on the intermission because I think we have to learn a song for the second set. <laughs> but um, we're gonna, but we'll come out and hang out with everybody after the show. And um, we've got some CDs up there, a um, couple titles, and this is on one of them. They're 15 or two for 25, and um, oh yeah, the song. Um, <laughs> This one has a lot of accidental notes that the last one didn't have, in case you were praying those. It won't be accidents now. <laughs> this one's also in, in a couple of time signatures at once. Is it the, did you say it? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. It's in both 9 and 12 at the same time, so. It sounds very that's, mathematical. If that's of any interest to you guys, hopefully, hopefully it is. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm sure there's some guy sitting in the back row back there counting to 9 and 12 successively. Oh, well, maybe at the same time. <laughs> Let us know who you are if you'd like to take a lesson. <laughs> yeah, if you don't happen to read sheet music super well, it's not a great team to learn off sheet music. We did learn off sheet music, though, in fact, and um, it was pretty exciting. In fact, it's a really exciting tune. It's kind of long, so get comfortable. It's not that long. It's only like seven minutes or eight minutes long. I guess that's kind of long. Uh, it sounds pretty long. That's shorter than so many things today. <laughs> I shouldn't ask you to name them. Um, uh, anyway, this one's called Gyra Smoke. And we're really excited that you're here with us on Valentine's Day. And... Uh, this has nothing to do with Valentine's Day. So if you're feeling ambivalent about Valentine's Day, this is the song for you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Crying in the Rain, the Everly Brothers popularized that one. Carol, <coughs> maybe. And um, now we'll play um, one of ours from our first CD. We played a little tour with Lori Lewis last year. <coughs> and um, Lori wanted the crowd to tell her which of the Everly Brothers they thought was more attractive. Uh, cuter. <laughs> cuter. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know, just like having the Everly Brothers like be this name back in the history of music, I haven't thought of that. <laughs> I don't know, I saw YouTube and they were both at too. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I guess I gotta go educate myself on YouTube. Hmm. Truly. It's an endless process there. <laughs> Especially the comments, they're always so educational. <laughs> I'm positive. But always positive. Always positive. YouTube comments. Well, we're going to play a positive song for you. Right. With no lyrics. With no lyrics, but we, it's a Christmas carol about crackers. It's called Stone Ground. <laughs>
lot of writing, but this was specifically a short story that was supposed to be a children's story, I think, originally, right? Yeah. It was the idea, the intention. It came out a little dark, it's called, Ouch, I'm being eaten by a leopard. <laughs> but it's a really beautiful story. <laughs> but I do know many young people who enjoy it a lot. In spite of the parents. As well as, as, well as adults. It's, it's, uh, if you want to check it out, it's printed in the, uh, the booklet of our latest there's CD. Probably, um, uh, there's probably one of those little booklet inserts sitting out on the table, out there on the table. Yeah, yeah. she certainly do. You'd anyway. like to... Embarrassed, Simon. Uh, yeah, I had one guy come up to me after a show once and be like, oh, that story is really cool. And then most of the other time it's like, that's really weird. Why did you like that? <laughs> <laughs> we actually had a friend of ours who's, uh, we had a couple of young friends, or about 13 or 14, along with us on tour, on the earlier part of this tour when we were down in LA. And so one night, uh, our friend who sings uh, read the story and the other girl played the accordion behind her. It was actually quite nice. Um, what I wanted to point out with um, all that talk about the story is that it ties in with this tune because this next tune is um, called Theodore's Waltz and it's the, the instrumental sort of journey of the main the character. Main character, the character Theodore. Um, is that guest book still out there somewhere? Does anybody else want it? Can it go around? I'm just, just making sure it goes around. Sometimes it gets held up somewhere. Um, well, I think I'm about in this weird crust in music.
side. How are you guys doing out there? That's good. Okay, cool. I feel better now. <laughs> uh, How many people would like to talk about different time signatures for the next hour and a half? <laughs> Why don't you talk about this next tune in that case? Oh man. <laughs> I'm bad on the posture, anyways. I don't know. I feel like it's worse when I'm talking on the mic. Um, but. <laughs> another tune. Uh... Oh, I know what I'm going to say about this tune. I figured this out the other night. Um, there's three parts of this tune, and they're like, they go like this, right? So the first part is like... And the second part is like...
But I have some questions for you guys. Is that okay? Or is that too weird? Yep. Go for it. How many of you are musicians? Figured. You musicians will come out and say anything. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> um, uh, well, that makes me a little nervous, but it's a good thing. We're honored. <laughs> I have more questions, I'm just thinking about that. Any Hammer Nelsomer players here? <laughs> <laughs> just, you never know. Yeah. yeah, this is the story of my life at workshops. It's like... <laughs> I... know how to do this. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> right. But... We were teaching the other day and... and for some reason, I, I got through life without learning to snap my fingers. Well, I just did, but uh, I'm not very good, but but I can do it now. And um, we were teaching the other day, last the other year, and I was like, man, I gotta learn to snap my fingers because, like, when we're supposed to be demonstrating this activity together, and he does that, I can't snap my fingers. <laughs> I was like, this doesn't work. So I've, I've been practicing. <laughs> However, I can do better cartwheels than Simon. So. Anyway, I had more questions. Oh yeah. Um, I was wondering how you guys knew about the show. Like, did you see a poster? Who came yeah, because yeah. we saw a poster? Yeah, I saw a poster. Heard you on the radio. Radio? Radio is popular? Yeah. Internet's popular. Oh, of course. Cool. Um, North Coast Journal. North Coast Journal, really? Cool. Voices in your head? <laughs> A movie night here, and we got a little handout card. Really? Yeah. That's lovely. You got an email? Was it from us? No, it's from the Playhouse. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we're just sometimes we're curious, you know, um, how people get the word out and stuff. But, so that, that helps quite a bit. Um, the other question is um, what did you have for breakfast? <laughs> on three. So on the one, three. one, two, um here's one more tune um from the Beatles. It's great to uh, hang out and reconnect with him a little bit. And um, Rob and I got up at about 5:45 this morning and did um, some Indian classical violin practice from six to eight. Wow. So I had breakfast quite early, and then we went and walked on the beach. And um, it was a really beautiful way to start a day, but um, not typical musician hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, we usually go to sleep at about well, just a few hours before that. <laughs> Over at the Celtic Connections Festival in Glasgow, where we were, that was sort of the typical going to bed hour. It was between six and eight in the morning. <laughs> we became entirely nocturnal, and not even by choice, just because the entire rest of the festival was. And what were you going to do? You know, fight it? <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> um, anyway, um, this is. It's only love dealing with, we're not going to sing it, but dealing with many of the different sides of the way one can look at that subject. Alright. Can we put down a pad or something? And open it?
which we will think about. <laughs> Are there any cookies left in that lobby there? I'd like to think I don't have many vices, but sugar is definitely one of them. yourself but you didn't really intend to but then you but you're here anyways you know what I mean like <laughs> like like you're trying to you're just trying to relax or like you're trying to breathe or just do something totally normal and you can't even do it and you're like in front of however many people, and you're like, I would just, I would love it if I could just. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all just looking at you. <laughs> right, and you're like, man, I. But then it's all, it's kind of about, like, like you know how we're relating and stuff, and I don't know. Sometimes it feels like it's like, hey, look what. Works and doesn't work up here. <laughs> it's not working, you're like, oh my god. Uh, I hope this isn't too personal for you. That's, that's, that's closer than I've gotten yet. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out tonight to the Playhouse, and thanks to um, Denise and everyone who's involved in making the Playhouse such a great venue to have music here in Arcadia. There's still some tickets for tomorrow night, so tell your friends if they missed tonight. We'll be here same time, same place tomorrow. Probably some different tunes, um, at least in a different order. <laughs> Not all the same notes, but we'll sort of reshuffle them in different ways as we go. So, um, it'll be good. And a huge thank you to our mom, Jan Clarich, who has worked tirelessly uh, putting on these shows for us for months. <laughs> Uh, give a little shout out to our friend Rita for bringing us the quinoa enchiladas that were amazing. Yeah. <laughs> You'll recognize this.
Thank you.